herself. I mean, what can I say, Miss Betty Wright? You've got ready to go and tell some people out there, tell the ladies out there pretty much how serious this issue is about domestic violence in the world. Why did you come up with Go and why did you do it live and why did you put this single out there for the world to hear at this point in time in your life? I am tired of junk, period. Uh, I've been watching people get beat up all my life, including me. And I just, uh, I feel like when we don't do anything about it, it just makes room for the next act of random violence that could end up in somebody being dead and not necessarily the person that the violence was done to. They may just retaliate. So I, I guess about two or three years ago, it had been really, really pressing, pressing, pressing on my heart. and. I got to the Grammys and we were all set to see uh, Rihanna and Chris do their thing and I said, well, that's a bad time to put it because when they started talking about that, I said, oh, mm. people are going to say, oh, she just took this opportunity to do this and catch the wave because right. it ain't about a wave. Right. Then uh, stuff happened with Tyre and his wife and then Charlie Sheen and then the stuff with Mel Gibson and I'm like, when am I going to be able to put this record out? Right. And when I went... Uh, to go to bed that night, in the midst of my prayers, I really believe that the audible voice of God says, it ain't, it ain't about no celebrities, it's about mm. people getting hurt every day. That's and right. that I couldn't just sit down and reflect and say, oh, well, I don't want to do this, I don't want to hurt Rihanna's feelings, I don't want to hurt Chris's feelings, I don't want to hurt this one's feelings, mm -hmm. because it really ain't about them, mm -hmm. it's about violence, period. Mm -hmm whether it was provoked, whether somebody just woke up today and said, oh, let me just go knock somebody out. Right. You know, let me just, you know, they, they fired me from my job. Let me just go beat up my wife. Right. Let me just go slap my kids down because I'm not uh, bold enough to stand flat-footed right. and tell my boss I really mm. need that race. Let me just take the frustration out on somebody. Mm. So um, I eventually did get a studio version out, but it was still just not riveting enough for what I was trying to do. It was okay. Okay. And I mean, in a sense okay. of comparing it to other records on the radio, it probably would have been okay, but right. still wasn't what I was looking for. So did you approach it, if I can interrupt you for a minute, did you, did you approach it as a survivor of domestic violence or as a victim? Because, you know, we mm. hear like the victims of domestic violence. And mm. How do we, you know, we gave you that kind of like you said, okay, this is not where I want, I needed to be a pivotal point for people to really listen to this message to say, you know what, we're going to stop this. Now, we're mine get wasn't, women help. Yeah, mine wasn't necessarily domestic violence because when okay. I think of that, I think of people living in one place and that happening. Okay. I have been watching it. I was born in the projects. I've been watching violence all my life. Okay. When I say that I survived it or am a victim, I didn't allow myself to be a victim okay. because I fought back. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, what happens with us when we get stuck and begin to think it's okay, mm -hmm. that's when we become victims of it. Mm -hmm. I really have to say God is good because it God. happened to me in my childhood, but since I've been grown, right. I don't play that. I, when I turned 21, I looked like sense just came and knocked on my door <laughs> and said, hey, I'm here. I'm here, and I, I'm going to help you. I you believe know, that. I believe I got that. Help. I believe real. that. And you came from a gospel foundation. Yes, you know, grew up in Miami, um, one of seven children. Yes. Um, where does that, I guess, that discernment come from? Is it just from your, your spiritual intervention? Uh, I think that's, that's where it all comes from. Because even now, I can't depend on what I see because mm -hmm. people make stuff look good. You mm -hmm. can just look at it um, eye, right. from eye value, and, you know, okay. unless you use that third eye, which is the Holy Spirit, you're not going to yeah. see anything but what they want to depict. I sure. saw somebody on TV yesterday talking about body language. Oh, did you see when he turned his foot this way, he's saying, man, you could do that just because you know what they're looking for. 
If I want to seem assertive, I've already heard people say, mm -hmm. when you're talking, turn your palms down mm -hmm. and say you you know. Mm -hmm. That means I know. But if I'm talking and I'm doing this, I'm saying, I don't really know if I'm talking to you with my palms up. That's a bunch of crap. Because <laughs> if I want to throw you off, I could just say, I don't know, and I know everything about it. Because right. I know you reading me, That's right. my body language. That's so right. I learn to read body language people that are, are looking for that in me right. to right. throw them off. Got yeah. simple things to confound the wise mm -hmm. or the ones who think they're wise. They're 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 yeah, so I, I, I totally depend on the discernment of God because mm -hmm. otherwise I, I'll just make a mistake if I lean on unto my own understanding. Lyrics. Your lyrics are so true. Just, I mean, the real raw grit, soul, and experience of it all. And you continue to write from the day that you first wrote your song to now being so relevant. You talked about old school. And it's not old school versus new school. It's still old school. Why? Well, because I'm a purist. And being that I'm from the South, when I heard music, it was basically in pure form. Mm -hmm. And we weren't allowed when we were very small to even listen to certain things on the radio. Mm -hmm. So if I heard it, it was a live band. Right. So these were people that could really play and really <laughs> sing because you really wouldn't have a gig back in the day. What about uh, who knows you and who your mama knows and how they do it now? Oh, yeah, my little girlfriend, she just did a record. Here, here's my record. Mm -hmm. And whoever got the most money is in the flow. Right. You had to really be able to do it. So I heard it from my brothers. Mm -hmm. I heard it from the people in church. So I was listening to people all day long that could outsing most people on the radio. Oh, my God. You know, which is, you know, God, heaven forbid that uh -huh. the, those sisters in that choir decide one day we're just going to take over the radio <laughs> station and show them how it's really done. Right. And just don't let nobody on the air, unless they can really sing, it won't be but about three records getting played. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So y'all came up with echoes of joy. Yeah, my, my mom said she heard that uh, that was given to her in a, either a dream or a vision mm. that God said called the, the children the echoes of joy and she was our only musician everything that you see me do that's what my mom did play the guitar, write her songs sing, produce mm -hmm. she did it all and she mm -hmm. did it before it was fashionable mm. so she didn't get a lot of credit for having her own company but she used to sell her records out of the house and yeah. sell them at the venues. We opened up for all kind of famous people. Swan yeah. Silvertone, Swanee Quintet, Soul yeah. Stirrers, when <laughs> when Shirley Caesar was still with the caravan, uh -huh. Albertina Walken, all of them. You talking about old Oh, oh cool. yeah. For real. For real. <laughs> for real. The High Tower Brothers, right. you know, um, and just amazing gospel groups. Yeah. So uh, it was in us, you know, and the gospel, yeah. it never leaves. And I, I think people try too hard. It's like separates, uh, what do they say, separation of church, church and state. state right. That's a bunch of crap. You go to court, what's the first thing they make you do? They see if you're going to tell the truth. Put your hand on the, on the Bible. Bible. Come on, girl. Right. You know, that's, that's just off. That's just off. Well, you're never going to be separate. Well, you no, know, you can't have a state without God because he right. is the state. Every he made the it. state and everybody in it. That's right. So um, I don't hide, you know, my lifestyle under a bushel mm -hmm. that I believe God is, is the perfect gift giver. Mm -hmm. So if I got a gift, I know where it came from. Mm -hmm. That's why it's easy for me to say I'm good because God is good. And oh, when God. I say I, I'm talking, people will think you're not modest. If mm -hmm. you don't say, oh, well, you know, I sing a little bit. Oh, I write a little bit. I write a lot because I depend on God. <laughs> and he's great and he is good. All the time. So when I'm That's writing, right. I'm always thinking That's right. that God gave me this song. You yeah. know, when I, when I supply the faith, all I need to do is work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, faith without works is dead. But if I supply both of them, I got to go. What I appreciate in you also is you saying today that um, when you're working with Lil Wayne, when you work with Lil Wayne and you're working with John Stone and, um, and Snoop Dogg and all the instruments people that you have touched in your journey is the fact that you are still coaching them. You're still guiding them. Yes. And I think that's so important to hear because we should never stop learning. And you as a teacher, I'm sure you're still pulling from someone else too. Who would be... Oh, I, I learned from those students, too. I learned from the tallest mm -hmm. to the smallest. I got a, I think she's about 10 now, a little girl, Asha. She's featured on a record, I think right now, Ace Hood, um, something that DJ Khaled did. Okay. This little girl said to me, after seeing my performance, she was about eight. Mm -hmm. She came to the window in my car. Her mm -hmm. older sister, Ashayla, mm -hmm. sings backup for me and is a singer in her own right, wow. songwriter, producer, 
extremely gifted child, mm -hmm. praise and worshiper, uh, worship leader. Mm -hmm. Her sister said to me, you know what, Miss B, you are just amazing. And there's nothing anybody could say about Donna Ross that they can't say about you because y'all are like right here and here. And wow. when she put the little level <laughs> hands up and showed me how she saw me, that just incredible. It, it did something to me. That's a simple thing. Yeah. It's a simple thing, but you know how strong that is when a kid says that? Because mm -hmm. you can't pay them to say it. They will eat your candy, <laughs> eat your, 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 your foot loops, your Captain Crunch, and still tell you your dress is ugly. Oh, I like that ugly dress you got on. Ooh, your hair, you go in with your hair like that? Okay, I yeah. love you, but they'll still tell you. They when your friends say, girl, you look good. Girl, go ahead. You know, you <laughs> stepping out and they say, ooh, child, she a hot man. You know, out of the mouth of babe. Yeah, so um, I think that um, those little things teach me mm -hmm. that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You may think you all that, but if somebody's saying, ain't that to me, you know, it's, I'm always in search of the next whatever.